Hi guys, I'm going to introduce you to 10 important tips that you need to know when you're planning on teaching the younger learners. Whether this is online or in classroom, I think this is 10 of the most important things that you need to familiarize yourself. So number one, learn the phonetic alphabet. Make sure that you are familiar with the different sounds of each alphabet letter and you know how to make it. Practice that. And after that, please watch the Jolly Phonics video, which I'm going to add after this. So that's also important. You're going to come across it a lot when you're teaching at a school or even when you're teaching online and you have to be able to teach phonics. There are a lot of opportunities for teachers wanting to teach phonics or who are able and capable of teaching phonics. You'll automatically increase your opportunities if you're able to teach phonics and you have know how to do that okay so that is tip number one again phonics you have to familiarize yourself with the phonetic alphabet i've also added a free book or a guide here for you guys go through that it teaches you how to teach phonics to younger students so please go through that guide as well so let's watch the Jolly Phonics video quickly. Tip number two, use flashcards and props. So you can buy some of these flashcards for you. They're quite easy, but you can buy them online as well, I think. Okay, the bigger ones are more interesting for the younger students. In many classrooms, you will have flashcards to use. So this doesn't mean you necessarily need to have your own flashcards. If you teach online, I would say, or I would suggest that you try to get your own flashcards, especially before you do the demo. If you use flashcards during your demo lesson, that's automatically gonna give you better points. It's gonna increase your chances of getting higher. So get yourself a few flashcards like these ones, and even if you just use them during your demonstration lesson. You're also gonna use them uh, when you go to school in Thailand. Sometimes they want you to do a demonstration teaching lesson. I will get into that a bit later during our lesson about teaching abroad and the hiring process, but also again, beneficial if you have your own flashcards. Props, funny things like this hat, I bought it in Thailand, it's quite funny actually. Monkey hat, the kids love it, you can put it on, I know it's a bit clownish, but this is what they're looking for, they're looking for fun energetic teachers. This hat also works very well when you're doing your demo online. So I don't know if you'll be able to buy something like this online, uh, but you can get a similar thing like that. It's just an example. So that would be number two for me. Now let's get into the next one. So next up, I would suggest that you always use chants songs and rhymes to teach younger students you'll probably have a computer and a tv screen in your classroom so make use of uh, resources like youtube and get to know the most popular and familiar songs i will put up some examples after this video as well and also on my pp on my ppt slide or my pdf slide that i've uploaded there are some links you can go to as well uh, these songs would be things like the wheels of the bus go round and round the good morning song just the regular stuff if you have a child you'll probably know them already okay so that would be my third tip right tip number four teach interesting topics topics that they're going to have fun with like for example superheroes as a topic then you can use verbs to teach superheroes this one can fly, jump, you're getting the idea, right? So use an interesting topic, even if it's just to grab their attention from the beginning of the lesson. 
Remember, these are younger students. They, they get bored pretty easily. So use interesting topics, relevant topics. If you see they like Spider-Man or they like the Frozen movie or whatever is in at that stage amongst them, use that as a topic just to grab their attention a little bit. Okay, tip number five, use a variety in your lesson. So during your lesson, like you saw in the example I was doing, use about seven to eight different activities. I know it's a lot of lesson planning. This is why kindergartners get paid more than the other teachers. Make sure you are prepared. You've got the right resources, the stuff you need to print out, do that beforehand and make sure your lesson goes according to plan, right? So add a lot of variety and mix it up a little bit, right? When I'm saying add variety, I mean don't just teach English, but mix it up with cooking. Teach them cooking vocabulary while they're doing or while they're baking cupcakes, if you have a cooking room at your school. Or do art-based activities. During play-based activities, talk to the students while they're playing with the building blocks. Remember, they have brains like sponges, right? They listen and absorb more than you could imagine. Okay, so variety and switching. Don't make one activity go on for too long. As soon as you see they're getting bored, switch to the next one, right? Okay, next, use creativity in your lesson. Sim similar to what I mentioned earlier, you can use a lot of art activities. But you can also use activities based on sports like yoga. You can do yoga with them while teaching them vocabulary, right? So active and creative lessons, keep them engaged, keep them moving, keep them curious about the lesson. Tip number seven, always talk to them while they're busy doing activities so they can absorb the vocabulary. They're gonna listen to you and they're gonna repeat. So even while they're doing play-based activities, always talk to them, try to introduce new vocabulary and listen to mistakes that they're making throughout talking. Encourage them to always speak English. Okay, they, they must refrain from using Thai or any of their first languages. Be very strict about this because younger learners will go back to using their first language quite often. Next up, be energetic. Not always easy when you're not 25 anymore. It can be quite tiring, but even if it's just during the songs or some of the sport activities, be energetic and get them moving, get them excited about the lesson. Even if you're teaching online, they, they're gonna tell you you have to be energetic, right? Meaning use your face a lot, use the TPR method. Very important, be energetic and use the TPR method. Show them uh, happy, right, sad. No, yes, left, right. Always use TPR when you're teaching younger learners. Use colors and visuals like flashcards, posters, uh, video clips, anything that they will find visually interesting right don't use black and white stuff it doesn't really work for younger learners and the last tip engagement and a lot of games play a lot of esl games there are some videos on youtube as well i'm gonna add i have added this before though the seven most popular flashcard games you don't need a lot for this you just need your flashcards or you can play musical chairs with them but you have to incorporate english vocabulary while playing these games right they love esl games there's another game that's a phonic game that you can use a ping pong ball actually and you stack up three different cups right and then they have to throw it it's almost like like we would play beer pong to put it like that and in each cup you're going to put all of the letters of the alphabet or five letters five 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 and say if they throw the ping pong ball into the cup they have to draw one of the one of the letters over there and they have to 
I make the phonic sounds. So say if it's A they have to make. Ah, 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 three times. That's also an interesting game. Right, so that's my 10 tips. Um, from experience, I've learned this is what works the best. Uh, whether it's online or in classroom, some of this obviously you won't be able to do online, but I've mentioned many ways in which you can incorporate some of these tips into your online lessons as well. Uh, there are also a lot of online games that you can play with the students. Uh, you can use Kahoot online. See that in the free teaching resources and gamification lesson if you would like to know more about that. And you can make your own games, right? Find the hidden object games where you can circle the different objects. All right, so that is it. Thank you so much. I hope you can use all of these tips and it will get you the job that you want and uh, that it will make lesson planning easier for you. Thanks.